Hey y'all, welcome back to A Funny Thing Happened on the Way Home from Church. I'm Fred and she is... Rhonda. Welcome back to our show. Thank y'all so much for letting us know uh, how 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 good you think of what we're doing, <laughs> how good a job you think we're doing, how good a job you think we're going to do. Yes. Your responses to our initial posts have been encouraging and uplifting. So we're going to jump right into today's show. Last week we talked about what actually happened. We yes. talked about the conversation that we had, the conversation that we kept finding ourselves having Yes. And uh, over the course of this, our prayer is that we are helpful to you. That's our main goal is yes. just to be helpful, to be um, a, a safe space for a conversation, but also a hub of solutions. Yes. Okay. So today we're diving into this topic. It is the need for new wine skins. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily the need for new wine because the new wine is already being poured out, but we need new wine skins. And yes. of course, uh, Luke 5 and 39, Jesus talks about that wine skin bursting. If you put new wine into an old wine skin, it's already been stretched. It's already been, you know, it's reached its limit. Yes. And so uh, we want to be able to handle the new that's being poured out. So that's where this conversation is today. Come in a little bit closer into this shot. Get a little closer to me. <laughs> <laughs> so I am Fred. She is Rhonda. And we're having these conversations. A funny thing happened on the way home from church. We were conversing about a number of topics and these things kept coming up. So today's topic is the need for new wine skin. So let's dive right into it. We need to be able to handle what's being poured out uh, without the wine skin bursting. In that time, wine was poured into wine skins, not necessarily bottles. Uh, they didn't do it that way. The Pharisees approached Jesus. This is in Luke 5. This is Luke 5, the chapter where he calls Peter. He calls and commissions Peter right from the, the shore. Uh, and so later on, they say, how come the, the disciples you teaching us Pharisees and John's disciples, how come they not fasting like us? Jesus says, listen, the day and time is going to come when they're going to have to do that. Y'all chill. I'm with them right now. So they don't need to do all that. I'm teaching uh -huh. them right now. In fact, they were new wine skins yes. receiving the new wine of the way of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So uh, the disciples, they it, what listen, what was old and had aged sweet to the Pharisees and John's disciples would be bitter uh, to those disciples had they tried to drink it at that time. And in Acts 15, uh, it's James at that council that they have. James and Peter, they decide uh, what they're going to allow to be taught to the Gentiles. They say, listen, our fathers couldn't do this with the yoke that was on our neck. So how can we tell uh, the new people? Listen, here's what you teach them. And they, they laid that out in Acts 15. And this is what I tell those people who are legalists, who are law thumpers, you know, <laughs> go to Acts 15 and get out of my face. All right. I'll keep it. I'll keep it on the yeah, level, right? It goes. So, yeah. but new wine needed new wine skins yes. um, to both hold it and it matured the wine. Also, in the church, a complaint we often hear, y'all, uh, is that we don't create new wine skins for the new wine being poured out. Uh, sometimes the new wine is a revelation of the gospel. It's the revelation of who God is, revelation of the truth. Sometimes it's the truth um, that we discover in Scripture. Yes. It's been there in the Bible the whole time. We just hadn't paid attention to it. Sometimes it's advancements in practice and procedure. Yes. Uh, here's one, tithing versus grace giving, you know. Um, so, and, and Paul is talking to the Gentiles about giving, and he's telling them what we hear in church all the time. Uh, but they parse that message with tithing. Tithing was, uh, there were four tithes taken throughout the year. Uh, it was more so a temple tax. It supported the work of the temple. The Levites were, hey, y'all not in the field. Nehemiah had to go in and reinstitute the tithe and call the Levites out of the field. So mm -hmm. if you go into that, there's a reason for that. However, there were several other tithes that were taken during the year. And so uh, if you're going to be holding to that, let's be holding to all of it, right? <laughs> no, because that's not the way uh, the, the modern church works, right? Yeah. Um, so grace giving, you're not you're limited to 10%. You're giving out of the abundance of your heart. You're giving out of the abundance of what God has done for you. Even out of the abundance of your thanksgiving, you know, yes. to God for what he's done. Uh, another one. Tarrying for the Holy Ghost. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Listen, come on down to this altar. <laughs> Say thank and you me. know what we do in the modern church? Yes. Here's the modern advancement. We ready to go home. <laughs> used to be tarrying until you got it. <laughs> You know, yes, um, some people, hey, listen, two, three hours Tell later, Lord, thank if you. you ain't got Tell it, Lord, you know, by the time, you know, they had a time limit back then, but now they not sure really. got one. <laughs> um, you're right. Not really. Not really. No. Um, but now, you know, listen, we understand that you don't have to tarry for the Holy Ghost. Never had to. 
uh, just receiving it and being filled. It's being filled. Every believer yeah. has the Holy Ghost, but it's the fullness yeah. of the Holy Ghost, the baptism into the fullness of the Holy Ghost um, that be, has become a denominational uh, divide. Yes. Because it's like you either believe that way or you don't. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, but if you look at Scripture, come on, you got to look at Scripture, not, not at your doctrine. Uh, there are people that want to argue doctrine, church doctrine. Well, this is what we believe. What does the Bible say? Bible say Get back yeah. to that and let's talk about it. If it says, like, even in Paul, what he's saying, sometimes it seems like he's contradicting himself. But he was talking to different audiences. Yes. They were doing different stuff. Man, come on, listen, do this here. You know, and and so, you know, the Bible, you got to open it up. Let yes. the Bible speak for itself. Yes. Um, and so we got to teach what the Bible says, as I just said, even if it refutes church doctrine. All right. <laughs> Uh, another outpouring that we experienced came with the pandemic, yeah. a technological outpouring as we embraced the church's untended and unintended <laughs> virtual spaces. Yeah. Untended because a lot of churches just didn't believe in, you know, streaming and all yes. of that stuff. They didn't need social media, so to speak. Um, and then the unintended virtual spaces when you couldn't have more than 10 people. So right. you had to do that, had to, you yes. know, um, that digital outpouring there. New members got younger. And we lost some of our foundational yes, older members, absolutely. you know, to death, COVID fears, apostasy. We talked about that last week. Some of those yes. older people ain't come back to church. And a, <laughs> a general aversion to regular church attendance. Yes. That's so interesting. Another outpouring. I know I'm just keep going on and on, but this conversation <laughs> is is years in the making. Yes. This particular yes. conversation, another outpouring uh, was a thirst for truth and the elimination of truth compromised by fallacy. That's going yes. back up to that conversation we just had a uh, second ago. Uh, there's been a rise in Hebrew Israelite teachings and that fallacious theology, heresy even. Um, there's been a desire to see the church uh, actualize uh, the, the part of the gospel. It's not a new gospel, but the part of the gospel that speaks to social justice, mm-hmm. um, seeing racism eradicated. The church ought to be on the front lines of that, but we saw in 2020 that all that did was some of these churches just drew lines in the sand. Um, they wouldn't even, I mean, eight minutes and 49 seconds, 46 seconds. The man has his knee on the back. What is there to argue about that? Yeah. And we could still couldn't even get churches to say, hey, that was wrong. That was wrong. You know, we yeah. still couldn't get that. And so because of that, the, you know, there's a generation of believers or potential believers who turn their back yes. completely on mm-hmm. the experience. Mm-hmm. Um, this younger generation, when they came in, they the pandemic brought them in. They wanted the church to answer their questions about the world, um, and 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 not necessarily the word. Yeah, they they you know it's like if you can answer this for me, then I'll be interested in that. It's like they say, people don't want to know how much you know until they know how much you care. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you I'm know saying that. And then, but a lot of our answers to mm-hmm. the young people, the world is in the word. It is. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. I'm like, if you read the word, it, it's some stuff that happens in, in there. there. Yeah. yeah. And it's in there. And so, you know, I think that comes with wisdom. Sure. You know, mm-hmm. uh, those who have been seasoned. Yep. Um, yep. Yep. To answer those type of questions, don't get no new Christians with a new Christian because they gonna be on the same. <laughs> yeah, they lost. But I got the it. blind leading the blind. <laughs> yep. Yes. I get you. I get you. But no, to that point, you know, we have to be willing to to say, okay, Lord, show me where it is. Yes. They want to know. I need to be able to answer this. Yes. If you really want to reach people, because mm-hmm. some churches, let's be honest, they don't want to reach nobody. Mm-hmm. They they want the same people coming, you know. And when that person passed away, they want to evangelize the funeral, the the family at the funeral. Yes. They don't. They really don't. And I've seen it. It's so weird to see it in real time, but I've seen it in real time. And I'm standing on that. If y'all want to do better, this is your chance to do better. Um, that's what this conversation wants to do. It wants to provoke you unto good works. Yes, <laughs> like yes. Paul said. Um, these young people came in. Um, and we were the young young generation that At asked questions. Time. But the times are so different now. Yeah. Like, we have to meet them where they are. Sure. Back then, it was like... Do what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and we just like, oh, okay, sorry. Right, right, but now right. these kids are like, well, no, because I don't understand what you're doing. Right. I need you to break that down for yep. me. And so we have to be ready. We have to be readily mm-hmm. available for these young people because they got 10,000 questions. Sure. Yeah. And they want you to answer those 10,000 questions, you know, yeah. before they say, oh, okay, well, I see what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> And they also have alternatives. Yeah. That's what we didn't have. <laughs> yeah. But they have alternatives. They can go to seminary on TikTok. 
Yes. You know, they can go to uh, the anti-church, yes. you know, on TikTok. They can find all of that there. It's a, a fingertip touch away, you know. Yes. Um, but they came in and they wanted to know why the church was okay with racism. Yes. You know, why was the church at the forefront of segregation and not uh, integration? Mm-hmm. You know, they wanted to know why the church is okay with social despondency. Mm-hmm. You know, why there's an imbalance of prosperity and charity. Mm-hmm. You know, you real loud on the God that's about to give you this and you you sneaking out the back door to go feed the homeless instead of what they feel should be the other way around, yes. you know? Yes. Um, and so these are some things that it's just that, that perspective that we really haven't seen, yes. you know? And they brought that in and they, they have a right to ask their questions, yes. especially once they get into it, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't want y'all, Paul even said, hey, I won't have you be ignorant yeah. He was talking about death and, and being united with Christ, but I think we should have the same approach in what we do. Everything should be able to be backed up in Scripture or at least explained in a clear way. Yes, you know? yes. And we do have a lot of pastors and preachers who can Absolutely. break it down to Absolutely. us to where we understand and never not, I won't say be so spiritual sure, about it. Yeah. They can... They can talk to them. With clarity. And, yes. Yeah. So they can understand, you know, uh, because that's what they want. They just sure. want people to relate with them and yes. not necessarily uh, spiritualize everything. Sometimes we <laughs> over spiritual, yeah. you know. Yeah. You know, I'm like, hey, you know, God, you know, you'd yeah. be like, oh, no, I don't want none of that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. But just having a conversation with them, I think, draws them, you know, mm-hmm. and God gives us those innovative and creative ways. Yeah to speak to our young people because, I mean, it's a new generation right. uh, with what we're dealing with now. We just got to be ready <laughs> for what they bring into us. That's right. That's part yeah. of that new wine scheme. Yeah, absolutely. Because it's already being poured out. So we need to, you know, become the vessels that can hold that, the absolutely. vessels that can foster that. Mm-hmm. Um, so where are the new wine skins to hold this? I'm asking this sort of... Um, Rhetorically, that's mm-hmm. the word I'm looking for. The, uh, sorry, y'all, for that um, pause. Uh, that that rhetorical question: Have we adjusted properly? Has the church at large realized the need for new wine skins? And I'm gonna say yes, because there are some churches who've done things yeah. progressive, and I have even said I don't like that. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't do that. But the church is kind of filling up. Mm-hmm. You know, the church is vibrant. Yes. <laughs> um, ha- have you, ha- what has been your reaction to seeing some of those, that, that new wine skin kind of perpetrated in, in, in the local church? I, I believe uh, some churches are there. Okay. And the rest of us are. Coming along? <laughs> yes. Yes, yes. We moving like snails, some of us. <laughs> but we getting there. We sure. trying. Yeah, we trying. You know, we trying to get there and. Because we want to see all of our churches grow. It's not sure. just about my church. It's right. not just about his church. It's about the kingdom. Yep. Like we want to see the kingdom expand. And mm-hmm. you know, if hell enlarges itself daily, why can't the kingdom enlarge itself daily? That's right. You know, so you know, we got to do what we got to do too. Mm-hmm. But I think yes, churches are coming along. There are some churches that are moving more quicker, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and maybe because of financial, you oh, know, okay. they you can never do know. More. Yes, they can, they can do, do more. more. Okay, okay. Uh, but some churches they're doing the best they can with what they got. Sure, mm-hmm. sure. Like the song says, "God take a little turn." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you know what? That's the purpose of this conversation yeah. is to at least cause you to have this conversation where you are. Yes. I am completely resigned to the fact that some people may never comment to us, but they'll take this video and they'll have a conversation at the church. Yes. They'll have a conversation, the pastor and his leadership, he'll have a conversation after watching this. That's fine. Yes. We're doing uh, what I'm doing. I'm doing what I feel God has led me to do in this season. And I thank God for my wife being next to me coming right along. All right. So we're doing that. Uh, accolades may come, they may not, whatever. Mm-hmm. I've been in this thing long <laughs> enough to just not even care been anymore. In this thing too long. Yeah. No. <laughs> yep. Yep. Um, but questions like these, the questions we're asking tonight are better answered by the likes of the Jude 3 Project. Um, urban apologetics is what they kind of lead with, but they have expanded conversations like these. And also the Black uh, Millennial Cafe. Reverend Brianna Parker. Lisa V. Fields is over the Jew 3 Project as well. They're doing uh, phenomenal work 
Um, so let's keep moving. We're commanded to be renewed. The renewal of our minds in Romans 12, 1 and 2, 12, 1, right? Um, but I'm thinking of renewal in this case as to keep it going like a subscription. You renew every month. You renew that insurance every month. Lord, insurance. Yeah, I'll pull it up. <laughs> <laughs> you renew it every month, yes. right? And so this renewal is coming to us as God is saying, this is how I'm continuing the work in the earth and this is how you ought to continue Mm -hmm. uh that work but our failure to be renewed is a repellent to those in the new outpour now i normally wouldn't ask this question because i'm i'll be honest i would normally just say let them go wherever they want to go wherever you want to go right (laughs) we shouldn't have to acquiesce to these people who probably ain't staying anyway um but in this conversation Mm -hmm. in this conversation do you feel that the failure to renew is a repellent uh, to those in this new airport, those who could come. Should we adjust or? I think we should adjust in some ways. Mm -hmm. Like you want to draw people in. Sure. Uh, but we also want to teach them some of our way. That's right. You know. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yes, we want you to come in and not saying we're going all off the yeah, yeah, wall right. to get you in here. Mm-hmm. Because if we got to turn flips and do ac- acrobatics, no thank you. Right. Absolutely. Um, but what do we need to do? You know, if we got to feed you, if mm-hmm. we got to mm-hmm. maybe sometimes it's paying a bill mm-hmm. or it's, you know, meeting a need for you before you open up to us. Wow. Then I think some churches are willing to do that. Mm. Uh, and then as we get you in and you open up, you learn more about our ways. And not, not saying our ways like our ways are bad, but just how to walk in the kingdom of God, you know, mm. uh, that we are all progressing daily. Nobody's perfect. Mm-hmm. You know, we're all trying to be, we all trying to get to heaven, we you all know. Trying. We all trying to get to heaven. But yes, I think in some instances, yes, we do have to maybe do a little more to mm-hmm. get them in and then show them. Good. Okay. So, you know, that's part of the Great Commission, yeah. right? Go ye. It's still in the Bible. Thank you, Dr. Horton. Also, <laughs> but he says teaching them to observe all things. Mm-hmm. And so I think that's also where a disconnect is. Um, and that's where some churches become uh, resistant to changes because as you're teaching them, I'm teaching you the ways of the kingdom, mm-hmm. I'm teaching you the ways of the church. And some people are not ready for that. That's and true. they come in, they. You know, oh, yeah, rah, rah, I'm part of something, and this is how we do it, Montel mm-hmm. Jordan. And then they, you can't get them to come back. Yeah. You can't get them to commit to doing anything. You can't commit to them. They won't commit to discipleship. Mm-hmm. And so it becomes a problem. Um, but also to the point of meeting a meeting physical needs, mm-hmm. there's a church, uh, Dr. Dana Carson in Houston, I believe. He's in Houston somewhere, South Texas. And they have, I don't know if it's weekly or once a month, bi-weekly they have a spread for bible study Mm -hmm. i don't mean like sandwiches they gotta get down Mm -hmm. for bible study but you have to think about bible study people are getting off work kids are getting out of school you know and so they just want to meet the need you ain't got to go home and cook dinner tonight that's exactly what he said in the post and i don't have to do that i mean they have a get down Mm -hmm. you know what i'm talking about but that's a burden lifter you think of single parents yeah you know, who may be struggling, sure. who don't have it for their kids to have yep. something to eat that night. Yep. So, you know, I, I think that's great. And even married people. Yeah. People Come getting on. off work. Come on. <laughs> and I don't want it, it, to, it's a McDonald's night. Yes. You know, even if it's you cook every night, you know, that church night or those church nights. nights yeah. Are fast you know, you're going to get them <laughs> yeah. Right. You know. Or if your church provides food, you know you want to at least have something Praise to eat. Lord. Your children will have something to eat yep. uh, on that night. But back to what you were saying earlier, as we draw them in and maybe they don't adjust to, mm-hmm. I'm going to share a story that one lady from church shared with us. Mm-hmm. A girl was coming uh, to church, and she had on, you know, some clothes that mm-hmm. were a little inappropriate to us. Oh, okay, to us. And so she went to her and put on a lap scar Mm -hmm. and covered her up, and she got offended. Yeah. And, you know, she said, now, as she's talking about, she said, well, maybe I didn't think about this, probably all she had. Mm -hmm. And for me to cover her up, 
was very offended, you know, and she didn't come back, oh, man. you know, after that. Because, yeah. you know, we just have to be mindful. We got to have discernment. Yep. You know, when new people come into our church, a new wine come into our <laughs> church, we have to have discernment because we don't, we don't want to be offensive. And we may sometimes, but we need to also be ready to apologize and say, you know, that was not my intent to offend yep. you. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry if there's anything I can help you with. You right. know, oh, yeah. we have to have open hearts, you know, and be willing to own our mistakes because we're going to mess up, yeah. you know. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, just to that effect, you know, we just have to have discernment and be careful, you know, too, as well. Yeah, you you know, you can't disciple somebody who's not a believer. That's mm-hmm. the other part. Mm-hmm. And some people show up in their church clothes because it's the only thing they have closely resembling yes. dress clothes <laughs> or church clothes, as we yes. would call it. Um, it's the same thing with caps. Don't wear caps in the sanctuary. I don't care. I don't care. I'm not a cap wearer. Uh, if I, I wear, you know, dress hats, I'm going to take my dress hat off. I'm going to yes. walk in a little bit because I need y'all to see me in my see dress hat. Praise the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to take it off. You know, I'm old school. I got a comb. Yeah. Comb that hat hair out. Mm-hmm. You know, some people don't. You know, back in the day, you can see them brothers with the indentures in their hair. And, you <laughs> some know, of my God. And the ball spot in the back. <laughs> you know, but things like that. You know, is this brother, is it going to be a deal breaker? Mm-hmm. We had a, a, a guy come sub for us on the drums, and he had his cap on. And the usher was like, take that hat off. You know, he was like, mm-hmm. I was like, bro, take the hat off. You know. But I'm like, she could have been a little nicer when she yeah, said it, that. you know. You know, in the sanctuary, do you mind? Yeah, you, you know, know, I mean, come on, man. Uh, I'm like, you can tell we not one of those churches because the light's on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you used to, you know, doing that at different places. But um, so, you know, it's things like that. Live, it becomes yeah. little things. Yes, those little does. things that, you know, can. That um, can deter a yeah, person. Yeah, absolutely. Break. And just to be clear, I'm, I'm, I'm using the, the phraseology of new wine. Um, and I'm using that to mean to it to mean like the new waves coming in. Jesus, even uh, as I said in the beginning, Jesus was introducing a new wine to those men. Uh, he was introducing it to them first. Mm-hmm. And so, some things that are coming along um, in the world in the church, uh, they're coming along. They're new to us, but God yes. is telling us to receive them. And so, yes. the way we receive them yes. is the new wine skin. The yes. way we have our our ability to hold it, our capacity to hold it mm-hmm. is that new wine skin. So we're talking about the need for new wine skins. Yes. All right. So y'all mm-hmm. following along with us. Uh, some people left traditional churches, keeping along with this new wine, this new wave. Uh, they left traditional churches in search of more modern worship experiences yes. and music, sacrament preaching, like I <laughs> talked about with the lights off. Some people want the lights off. And yes. if you want the lights off, go to a club church. OK. Yes. Um, and if you don't want the lights off, keep the lights on if that's what works for you. <laughs> Jesus's retort, though, about uh, wineskins tells us that not everybody is doing the same thing at the yes. same time. Mm-hmm. Not everybody is doing the same thing at the same time. The Pharisees and their religiosity, they answered, they asked that way. Even John's disciples got in on that. Why are they not fasting like us? Right? Yeah. Um, but even what is new will one day become old. Yes. Wow. What is new today yeah, will one be, day yeah. become I, old. Remember what we used to? And a lot of us, <laughs> you know, what we fought so hard to bring into the church now it's passe. We never thought that would happen, but it's passe mm-hmm. um, because as Luke five thirty nine says that listen, when it gets old, people will reject the new wine because they're familiar with and possibly full of, the <laughs> pun intended, the old wine. <laughs> old wine skins have already been stretched to their limit. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's now a souvenir and not at all sustainable for new wine. Mm-hmm. Jesus let them know what to expect though, as he was pouring out new wine and offering it. Uh, to his disciples to be the first to drink it. Uh, talking about this, this phenomenon still ex- exists today because we're apprehensive about anything new. Some of us are apprehensive about anything mm-hmm. new. I raise my hand. That's my um, mm-hmm. and, and there are some people who seem like they'll jump on the latest Man. trend yes. with in, with no research. Yes. <laughs> oh, is that what we're doing now? Tomorrow, Boom. Okay. Paint the sanctuary. <laughs> Get the lights. You know, Yes, you know, absolutely. Because people are always looking for something new. And it's so interesting to me yes. uh, that people are look at while people are looking for something new that 
as it's even being introduced, as it's even being poured out, you have this um, this this conglomeration of people uh, beating their chest for the old. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, who is it? Isaiah Jeremiah says, you know, going back to the old landmark. Listen, it's a landmark. It's gonna be there. Um, the truth of Christ, the truth of Christ will forever stand. Mm -hmm. um, however, how we have this local church experience will change. Do you agree with that? Uh, yes, I, I, I do. <laughs> because people change. Yes. And yeah. with each generation become, comes new ideas and comes new, you know, yeah. uh, like a church that we know. Back in the day mm -hmm. when we went, mm -hmm. It was it was it was pink on the inside, Man. you know, yep. cream walls. And now when you go in, there you know, no choir stand. Mm -hmm. They didn't, you know. And I'm like, oh, this is not the same church. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it is the same church, the same, yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh and it's in the still in the same family. Sure, yeah. But with in innovation and you know mm -hmm. wanting to reach a younger generation because i'm um, if if we don't be innovative if we don't yeah. create new things these young people not gonna come mm -mm. they not gonna come and and that's a sad thing i was just reading so it says in acts 2 and 17 say, and it shall come to pass in the last day, says God, I will pour my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy, prophesy mm -hmm. and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. What this says to me is like, we're supposed to be working together mm -hmm. in the kingdom of God. You know, yes, we have dreamers, we have visionaries, but we are, it's supposed to all work. Like, we're not supposed to be fighting. The old and new spot not supposed to be fighting. Sure. We got to find a happy medium. Mm -hmm. We got to find a place where everybody is. You know, because some of the old stuff ain't bad. Mm -mm. It's not bad. Mm -mm. And, and you know, we need to take that in. Yeah. But we also, as people who were raised in church, need to be open to new ideas and, and you know, innovative ideas. We have to be open to that in order for us to work together. Oh, I love that. And that leads us finally to the conversation. All right. So, question. How do we honor our vaunted past without alienating the emerging church of today? The vaunted past. You mentioned that pink inside the cream. <laughs> They're known for our colors. The choir robes. I'm a choir robes kind of yes, guy. I'm not a, I don't have a problem with I'm choir not. robes. Um, how do we honor, though, that past? without alienating the emerging church. They coming. Mm -hmm. How do we do that? Dedicate a Sunday. Old school Sunday. Mm -hmm. We're going to sing what we sang back in the day. Bring your tambourine. Bring your washboard. Mm -hmm. Come on. Mm -hmm. We can honor. We can We can always honor that. Or we can just take an old song and revamp it. We can mix the old with the new. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is how we sang about them. But it's, uh, listen, as long as we give them respect of, you know, mm -hmm. where they came from or where we came from. Right, right. I think they're open to that. Mm -hmm. You know, but not just throwing it all on back burner like it was all bad because mm. it's not. Yeah, because sometimes I feel like the church of today and certain, the, some local churches, when I say the church of today, I'm generalizing it, um, but sometimes I mean local, you know, the local church, the right down the street local church. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I feel like the local church does not have a connection to the things that got us over. The prayer meetings, uh, testimony service, hymn lining, you know, those are the kinds of things um, Growing up, this is what we did. We knew church service started at whatever time it started. Testimony service could go, depending on where you were, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour. Mm -hmm. It just added to the service. And and some people had good testimony service. Yeah. You know, it was good songs that came out of that, whether they were made up or whether whatever. <laughs> some people had testimonies that, that uh, strengthened our faith. Yes, absolutely. You know? um, so it wasn't bad. Now, of course, you had to test it. I call them testophonies. Y'all give me my money if you use that word again. People up there <laughs> test the line, telling testophonies. And, um, my pinky toe hurt. Yeah, you know, just lying about stuff. Just to, We had <laughs> competing testimonies. You know, you was in jail 10 years. I was almost in jail for murder. It's like, no, you wouldn't. No, you wouldn't. You wouldn't. You wouldn't. Don't do they that. They wrote you a ticket and sent you home. Right. You wouldn't. You, you wouldn't even. 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? So we we did have bad. We it compare, was bad. Yeah, compare we, our lives. We did have the deacons that didn't know the hymn. Mm-hmm. They knew the first word and they was. <laughs> you know, so it did happen. But how do we try to make room for both? in the same service now you said give them a, a week but what about in the same service you kind of answered it in, in your uh answer a second ago but if we were to be intentional about it how do you think uh we could make that happen um i i i mean just taking an old song and revamping it we sure. can do that okay, okay, uh, okay. and i'm saying that only because singing is is what I right do. yeah yeah we, we yeah we musical over here we yeah, yeah we, um so you know like we took blessings on best blessings and mm-hmm. then we took we took we put blessing the city on the end sure you know so just mixing what they know with just collaborating yeah. like and then you just have to be open mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know just to have to be open. Yeah. So. Yeah, you know, especially because a lot has changed. Not only has the church changed, the music industry has changed. Yeah. While we're talking about music, I mean, you used to be able to listen to the radio and find a song for Man. your church. I mean, you know, you it was that that simple. I'm listening to this station, and some people have more than had more than one gospel station. You know, th- that was the old school station. This the new, new school. school. Yeah. Um, and you and, got a CCM. Station. Yeah, you know, we <laughs> got we can listen to the radio now. You know, you don't have that. No. Of course, we thank God for Soul Prosper Radio, playing you the rest of the come best on, in gospel music. Come on, come on, plug it in. <laughs> of course, yeah. <laughs> uh, so you have that, but, you know, it's not everywhere. And the mm. music that's being released is not Sunday morning worthy. No. Um, you know, as ministers of music, we are gatekeepers for the sound of the church. Yeah. Um, and some of that stuff we ain't singing. I don't care who sing it. I don't care that's who right. released it. Uh, we ain't doing it. Um, but, you know, trying to honor the past as well as, you know, be in the present, it puts a strain on churches mm-hmm. um, because really some churches could probably do two services. They don't have the budget for it. Right. Um, and the real big issue is people ain't interested in two services. Now, mm-hmm. I'm going to say it colloquially. They ain't coming. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they not coming mm-hmm. to two services. I, I don't care. One or the other. Yep. Um, and, and we don't need a whole other service just because you want to do hymn line and then testimony service. You know, there may be a, a, an opportunity throughout the week. Yes, absolutely. You know, we can Bible do that. Study. Bible study. You know, or, mm-hmm. or maybe we do that in Sunday school, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. Um, ooh, Sunday school, Sunday right? Sunday school, Sunday school, Sunday school, Sunday school, Sunday school is marching on. Mm-hmm. 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 As you mm-hmm. in. D A Y S C H double O L Sunday school is marching on. Well, so yeah, maybe even <laughs> Sunday school. That's one of those things that you can do. You know, if you don't have one, get one. Yes. Right? Um, not everything old is bad and not everything new is good. Mm-hmm. And you, you can know? also tune in to Sunday School at 830 you sure can. with Fred Willis via Facebook and YouTube. Amen. There you go. Let's get it. Uh, what is the solution, though? And why is it important to strive to find a solution in this uh, in this predicament? I think we should strive to find a solution because we want to keep people in church. Mm-hmm. We don't want people church hopping. Now, what the solution <laughs> is, I don't know. Okay. That depends on each ministry. Sure. You know, what works at your ministry. So mm-hmm. what works at my ministry may not work at yours. Gotcha. So it depends on what your local church is. Uh, but, yes, we do want to keep people in church, and we don't want them to feel like that they're not important. Right, right, right. Or their idea is not important. Um, so that's what I think a solution is to just make sure, you know, we have to have open table discussions. Sure. Absolutely. And I think, you know what, while we talking about new wine and all this stuff, just ask the small gang, you know, or ask the vineyard, the, the, the husbandman of the vineyard. That's God himself. You know, pray, yeah. be led by the Absolutely. Holy Ghost about how to do all of this. Right. Yes. Um, because sometimes, you know, churches feel pressure to change, um, they feel pressure to change and they resist that and put their foot down and say, this is just who we are. Mm-hmm. You know, you either with us or just go somewhere else. Go down the, str- uh, go down the street. Uh, We're going to roll with the punches, mm-hmm. even if it's a, it leads to a decrease in, in membership, increase in leadership. Um, but, you know, to that end, what about outreach and evangelism efforts while we're trying to figure this out? How do you think, how do you feel about that? 
I mean, I think each ministry should have that in the evangelism team. But I mean, you know, while we mm-hmm. deal with the, the new wine, the new wave, and, and trying to have new wine skins, how do you think that fits into that conversation? How do you think that fits the conversation? Say it again. Evangelism outreach mm-hmm. and dealing with the new wine, the new wave, and having new wine skins. I know that's a lot. Yeah, it so is. So sometimes <laughs> I, I, I go into yeah, Sometimes I feel it. like we have missed, we missed the memo. To, mm-hmm. to go get people mm. um, and bring them to to Christ. And and we've swapped that with bringing them to church. Bring and so sometimes, yeah, and sometimes that kind of gets cloudy because the goal, the Great Commission, is to bring them to Christ. Mm-hmm. Now, we hope that when we bring them to Christ that they will choose to fellowship with us, uh-huh. especially since we're the one who, who went and got mm-hmm. them, you know. Um, but sometimes... We bring them into a burning building because we're trying to figure out our own identity. Yeah. We don't know who we are. Mm-hmm. We don't. We we haven't defined that yet. Um, and sometimes the people we bring, or sometimes the people we reach with outreach and evangelism, are not interested in coming to our church. That's what I mean mm-hmm. by that. Um, and so let me ask you this because I know you have an honest answer to this. We having an honest <laughs> conversation, y'all. <laughs> Uh, cause if nobody else has said we will, we have volunteered, I have volunteered to be the bad guy. Mm-hmm. She has not. So y'all go mm-hmm. easy on her. Um, how has the local church become a barrier to getting people to Jesus? I think we're just stuck in our ways. Mm-hmm. Period. My, I, my former pastor did it. My new pastor did it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the next pastor going to do it. Mm-hmm. We have allowed, we have allowed people to run our church and not seek the face of the Lord mm. on how we should run our church. Mm-hmm. So, so, so let me, let me say this. Yes. <laughs> and not saying people are bad. No, We're to just that, humans. to that point, mm-hmm. the goal was never to build churches. It was to build a kingdom. Mm-hmm. And so sometimes, you know, like we said last week, talking about the people in our neighborhood. Sometimes the people in our neighborhood cause problems. Yes, they do. And 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 we can't really build, mm-hmm. you know, kingdom stuff of trying to build a church, uh, trying to build up our status in the church, trying to build up our status in in our denomination. Mm-hmm. And so sometimes they get in the way. Um, and so with that being said, I think sometimes we have placed, uh, we have have misappropriated values. Listen to this. Sometimes I think we we say, okay, well, how many people are you bringing to church? Mm-hmm. As opposed to, how many people are you bringing to Christ? Mm-hmm. Yes. You know, how many people are you bringing to Christ? Because the truth is, some people will come to Christ. You might be able to lead thousands to Christ and only 12 to your church, mm-hmm. to your local church. Yes. And we got to be all right with that. Yes. Um, but again, we're never called to build local churches, mm-hmm. but the kingdom. And so the, in building the kingdom, we handle his business, he'll handle ours. Um, and so I think that if we start, now that might be unpopular. You can do whatever you want to with it. I said it. I'm going to stand on it. Um, but if we start with inviting people to Christ, mm-hmm. we can then worry about inviting them to church after that because you cannot disciple an unbeliever. Mm-hmm. You can walk through them on the journey to getting to Christ. That's what Jesus did. Yeah. <laughs> Peter was the prime example. Peter, Peter, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I still talking to you? <laughs> you know, it's a number of times. Sound like a parent. Yeah, there were a number of times the whole group missed it, you know? Mm-hmm. But you can't disciple an unbeliever. Yes. You know? And so the focus has to be on getting people to, to Christ. Christ. Yes, yeah, so and we have to sure. change our focus. Yeah. Yeah. We do. We do. Because we want to fill the building. Yeah. But we don't necessarily want to change people. We, we we want to see them in the pews. Yep. But we allow them. At whatever cost. Yeah. You know, I got to preach messages that keep y'all coming back yes. next week. You know, Absolutely. I understand. Because now we got budgets. Mm-hmm. We got to keep the lights on. We got to pay our staff. Um, we got to make sure our church look full on the live stream. Now, now listen, we got to. That's what. <laughs> we got to make sure we got resources so that when we do outreach. Yeah. You know. Absolutely. Some of these, you go reaching out to the homeless, you bring a sandwich. Mm-hmm. You know, that's not spiritualizing that. That's being practical. Yeah. Yeah. Bring food. That costs money, though. It does. Right? And so if the church don't have it, it puts a strain on the membership. Um, but it's a, it's a goal that can be reached. The Church of God in Christ has a theme this year, the mission made possible. Mm-hmm. And so it is possible. Ain't nothing impossible, especially not with the Lord on your side when you're doing his work. 
let's go ahead and try to close this out. I just want to say one thing my pastor has a commissioned us to do mm-hmm. in the next year to win one soul. Just one, yeah. That's all, one. Mm-hmm. And hopefully that will get us motivated to yeah. keep trying to bring people to Absolutely. Christ. To bring people. Just listen, the door is always open mm-hmm. all the time. Um, and listen, discipleship discipleship is, is bringing people deeper into Christ, into fellowship with Christ. I'm walking along the journey with you mm-hmm. when you say, you know, hey, man, I'm, I'm just talking. I'm not ready to, to invite Christ into my life now. I just, you know, thank you for being a listener here. I'm going to get drunk tonight. I'll see you tomorrow. Right? I'm, I'm, I'm your point of contact. I'm praying for you. Yes. I'll be there to pray with you until yes. I'm not, you know, I can tell you, hey, man, you ain't got to do that. Yeah. I, I'm Absolutely. here to let you know, you know, I'm evangelizing. Yeah. I'm evangelizing. And once you get saved, then I can go Disciple. to discipleship. Yes, absolutely. But you can't disciple somebody who ain't saved. That's mm-hmm. why they become resistant to us Christians when we started trying to disciple people instead of evangelizing. Evangelizing, I understand you, 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 your mind hasn't been changed yet. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, of course you're going to do that. I know you're going to do that. I Listen, we had a bad day at work. You're going to call somebody, find somebody to sleep with tonight because we had a bad day at work. I understand. <laughs> I understand. I'm letting you know. Yeah. You know, you better than that. Christ's love covers all of that. He can change your mind. Give your problems to him. Cast all your cares on him. He cares for you. Won't you yes. pray instead of laying? <laughs> instead of laying, pray. Get you your know. Bible, child. And look, and, and then, listen, and, and I can even, in my evangelism, I can say I'm not just telling you that because I'm saved I'm you or because I'm married. Yeah. I'm telling you this because my mind has changed. I'm telling you this because yeah. this is the, 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 listen, this is my life and the way it looks now, you yes. know? Um, but let's close this out. Uh, new wineskins give us a chance to increase our capacity. Uh, sometimes we have, we did good. We did good. We did good. But the Lord is saying, I'm ready to give you more. I'm ready. To, you know, even, even my phone is going off y'all. I'm sorry. Even in our culture, you did well, uh, with, with, with your people. Yeah. Now let's bring some people from the other side of the tracks. Yeah. Um, uh, maybe it's everybody in our church. Ha- it has gainful employment. We don't have welfare people in our church. We don't have people. Mm-hmm. You know who make Strike decisions life. on their yes. life based on what they have in unemployment. Yeah, and so these people come in and we don't know what to do with them. Yes, absolutely. Because they don't look anything like us. These people, you can write out a mission statement, you can write out a vision statement, but if your church is full of people that don't match that, mm-hmm. you have to find adjust. a way. Yeah, yes. you gotta adjust. adjust. You know, some people build churches in the neighborhood and do nothing for the neighborhood. Yes. You know, how dare we Im- impose on that neighborhood without so much as saying... And stay in the four walls. We stay there <laughs> and, li- and and burn rubber getting out of mm-hmm. there. Uh, or we try to pe- reach people where we live yep. and not in the community. Uh-oh. You're telling on somebody right there. We do it, though. Yeah. We do it, though. We just drive all... We drive <laughs> an hour away from our house. Yeah. To go out there and won't utter a word to our neighbor. Mm. Let me keep going because we're not supposed to be talking like that. I know though, but when growing up in our home church, mm-hmm. not our home church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chicago. My home church, no. Here. here. Okay. Yes. Right. Uh, my dad was considering moving where our church was mm-hmm. just to be able to, and I'm like, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> hold on, man of God. <laughs> you gonna move us out there? <laughs> No, daddy. Right, no, no. Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Is the Lord saying that or you saying that? What's yeah, going on here? But he felt a need. Yeah, he you know, compelled. you yeah. can reach people, mm-hmm. you know, if you're in their environment. Right. If you understand where they are, whether you come out of that mm-hmm, mm-hmm. or if you know, if you've been in that scenario, it's easier to get to that person. Right. Like, man, I know you, girl, I know I done been there. Mm-hmm. I understand that. Mm-hmm. You know, what we can relate, we can come here and not come to them like this, yep. but come to them like this. On the level. We can reach more people. Oh, I love can't that. Be, we can't be acting all mightier than thou yeah. when it comes to soul winning and, and uh, 
evangelism. Or really just be aloof. You don't know what's going on. Mm-hmm. You don't know what's going on over here. It was a shooting over here last night. And and y'all driving in. You know, we sad on this block. And everybody passed our sad house going to church. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, but that's old school where, where people knew. They knew what's going on. They knew the police knew. Yes. Uh, the police knew the pastor. Hey, pastor, yes, just want to let you know. You know, hey, it was a major wreck down the street from the church of fatalities. Yes. Families will be passing the church. You know, y'all can, you know, just be, just be, yeah. I'm letting it y'all used know. To be like that. Yes, you know, absolutely. We just telling y'all the funeral homes. Hey, uh, we picked up, you know, a decedent from your neighborhood, the neighborhood the church is in. This, mm-hmm. you know, this, they on your block. They around the corner from y'all, just in case y'all want to. They all member somewhere. But we just want to blah, blah, yes, blah. Absolutely. Right? So a lot has changed yes. in a lot of new waves. And um, there's a, a mortician that I follow on social media. And he talks about that very same thing, mm-hmm. talking about, you know, funeral homes catching up, mm-hmm. catching up. And, and churches are in that same um, predicament, precarious predicament. Um, because, listen, we're talking about this because more is being poured out and we need to be able to handle it. Yes. Um, because we absolutely can. That's why. Number one, we absolutely can. Um, new wine skins, though, give us a chance to hold and create an environment conducive to the maturation pro- process. Uh, when that wine was poured in, it matured in that wine yeah. skin. And sometimes the, these people coming in and this new wave, they need the environment mm-hmm. that evolve. they can grow in, yes. to evolve in, to become yes. who they are. Absolutely. It makes no sense for, for God to, to pour them out into an environment that's going to kill them. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. gonna kill their faith. That's gonna stunt their growth. So we need to be ready, um, and and even let me say this because we've been talking about the church, but sometimes those of us, yeah, um, we we need some work too. Yeah, we need we some new mess. new yeah. wine skins as people, <laughs> not just the church. We talking to the church, talking about the church, but sometimes people also need to get that. We need to stop being so Pharisaic and and mm-hmm. and, and and resisting the change that we yes, see. Because sometimes, hey, advancements hit the church. What's that going to cost? You know, yeah. shut up. Negative Nancy. <laughs> yeah, you got something to say every time. You know, you know, we used to do it this way. We did. Yeah. Yeah. We're not doing it that way. You know, we new. also need to receive new wine yes, skins absolutely. in the pews. Yes, absolutely. Hallelujah. All right. Let me keep my volume I agree. down. I don't I want, agree I don't want nobody yeah. calling at me. But seriously, because sometimes. we church kids. Yeah. And we used to a way, too. Yeah, we seen it. Yep. <laughs> Yep. We used to a way I'm like, wait, don't yep. do that. Mm-hmm. Uh-uh, we like it this way, but yep. we got to evolve with the time. Yeah, we, we do. do. We do. We got to listen. We got to see it. Mm-hmm. Discern the times. Discern yes. the times. You Come know, on. and see what God is doing. Look what God is doing yeah, all across, across the, land. the land. Come on now. See we can it? see. Feel the spirit moving. Uh huh. And do see what? His see hand. his mighty hand. It's moving. Yeah. As it's moving, our prayer is that he moves us. The, the Greek word for spirit, pneuma, that's, that, that signifies movement. Mm-hmm. And we cannot say that we uh, have the Holy Ghost, however you say this, we full of the Holy Ghost. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we believe in the Holy Ghost and we are stagnant. Mm-hmm. Numa, he's always moving. Mm-hmm. He's always moving. And as he's moving, we got to be ready to move with him. Move as he moves. Move, yes. Lord, I'm going to move as you move me. Right? Because sometimes our understanding has been yeah limited it got stale uh-huh mm-hmm. and it'll get stale especially when it's just still yeah you know uh-huh. but he is the <laughs> holy ghost and he is yes. moving yes all right is. did y'all receive that because yeah. that was rainbow right there let's get yeah. out of here sometimes the answer is not in another revival yeah it's in a new receptacle mm-hmm. in a new uh <laughs> i would say a, a cup in a new wine skin. It's not another revival. You say, oh, revivals again. But he said, I already sent new. Mm-hmm. I already sent what you need. Uh, you just need uh, a new wine skins to be able to receive it. Right? New ways of doing things as a church. New ways of experiencing church uh, even as a believer. And so, um, like Ty said, new, new, new. Uh, Everything. Uh, new, uh, new, uh, new. Uh, That's where we are, man. Uh, as he pours it out, we want to be the receptacle. Yeah. We want to be the receptacle. Um, and new <laughs> like, wineskins. That's right. Pour it out on us. Yes. You know, we can't ask him to pour it out and not be a willing receptacle. Yes, yes. You know, yes. to receive that, to be able to be the people that he needs to work, to, to even to receive what's being poured out yeah. in new people, in new ways, 
in the new wave. Yeah. Come here, Molly Music. Yeah. <laughs> in that new wave, you know? Yeah. As he's moving. And so we, we rely on the, the Holy Ghost. I heard somebody say, don't call the Holy Spirit. That's uh, spirit is liquor. The Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, however you hear that. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not mm-hmm. tripping on that. Mm-hmm. I say the Holy Spirit. Um, but if you need Holy Ghost, I know some of you. Yeah, you get a little, you get a little something extra when you say Holy Ghost. <laughs> <laughs> but the Holy Ghost, you yes. know, He's moving. No more. We yes. want Him moving. It's fresh. Uh, we want that as He's mm-hmm. pouring it out. We want to mm-hmm. be able to receive it. I'm gonna keep saying that. Yeah. Um, because that's what a lot of our friends are complaining about. That's what why people are not in church because the church where they went got stagnant. They got still. They got stuck. Uh, where they are and so listen as part of this conversation we just checking off the list did we cover this topic did we cover that one Uh, because there was so many times it was something else that had come up it was so many times our friends were venting either to us on social media they vented wherever they vent and we got wind of it Um, and so we had something to say about it so I hope y'all enjoyed our conversation tonight talking about the need for new wine skins Um, and I hope Listen, if you have something to contribute to the com- uh, conversation, put it in the comments. We we will be talking about this as long as you are. Um, and so <laughs> we trust that God uh, will, listen, will move this conversation along to the right people um, so that we can begin to converse about these things as he, as he is releasing, as he is pouring this out. This is what we do. This is the purpose of this conversation. A funny thing happened on the way home from church. Uh, because sometimes doing church gets in the way of us being the church. Yeah. And so we will work um, tremendously hard um, to make sure that things rectify, things are aligned, mm-hmm. and that we have the balance we need in the in the local church and in the greater church that is the kingdom. All right, so I'm going to give you the last word. I've I done most of the talking tonight. <laughs> um, she's coming out of her shell by episode four. <laughs> I think she'll be driving the bus. <laughs> no, but yeah, not I give really. I'm just a good passenger. Okay. I'll be a passenger on that. But yes, right. as as Elder Fred was saying, you know, we just want to be open and and willing. Low, our storage is empty, mm. and we are available to whatever the Lord is doing. Mm-hmm. Like the song said, Lord, whatever you're doing in this season. Yeah. Don't do it without me. I know that's right. I want to be in the number. I want to be a part of what you're doing because if I'm not a part, that means I'm out of your will. Mm. And so we want to be uh, make sure that we are in the will of God. You know, I'm so grateful for all of you uh, who are listening in on this, and I pray that this was a blessing to you. And I, I pray that you will move forward in the things that God has called you to do at your local church or if he calls you to do something uh, uh, along with your local church, whatever God has called you to do, just walk in it. Mm -hmm. Just walk in it. Don't be afraid. Mm -hmm. We got souls to win out there. So let's do it, y'all. Oh, I love it. What a clarion call. I hope you heard that Um, as uh, Missionary Rhonda. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, because I called you Elder Fred. I'm sorry. I'm Fred. She's Rhonda. (laughs) Uh, but we do work for the Lord. Yes. We are um, in the Lord's church as workers, and so we do this. This is our. This is a ministry. I'm mm-hmm. gonna say this is a ministry. Mm-hmm. Um, like I said last week, this ain't a soft launch. So y'all it's can. It's not. No. You can uh, unclench if you <laughs> tight and weary. This is not a soft launch. No. This is a conversation that we're Absolutely. having each week um, to the benefit of uh, the kingdom. Uh, starting at the local church, starting mm-hmm. in our in our friend groups and our families. Uh, so that's our episode for this week, yes. all right? Uh, so a funny thing happened on the way home from church. I'm going to let you pray us out because you pray such dynamic prayers. I'm going to let you continue to close us out uh, as we get out of here. Amen. So God, we just thank you for this day. Uh, God, we thank you for the words that came out, God. We pray, God, that it touched uh, the people out there, God. And we pray, oh God, that we will move forward in the things that you've called us to do. We pray, oh God, that we will be open to what you have for us, oh God. That we will not be complacent, that we will not be stagnated, oh God. God, but that we will move forward in the things that you've called us to do. We pray, God, that you touch each pastor, each leader, each elder, those who are in the 
the fivefold ministry, mm -hmm. oh God. We pray, God, that you would touch them, God, and we pray for every vision that you've given each leader, God. Mm -hmm. We pray, oh God, that we would line up with what you've given our leaders, oh yes. God, that we would not fight it, uh, but we would get in our rightful places, oh God. And we thank you for who you're bringing into each ministry, oh God. We pray, God, that you would prepare us. Oh, God, for those who will come in, God, because we don't want to kick them out. We don't want to do anything to offend them, oh, God. So we pray, God, that you would get us ready yes, for those who are coming into our ministries, oh, God. And we thank you, God, for what you're going to do as we're closing out 2023, God. We know that you have greater in store for thank us, you, oh, God. Yes, and we thank you for greater in 23 you, and 24 Jesus. and 25, God. We thank you for greater, oh, on today, God, and we give you glory, honor, and praise for yes. all the wonderful things that you are doing. Mm -hmm. And we pray, God, for those who don't know you, mm -hmm. if they're willing, if they're ready uh, to have a relationship with you, yes. God, that they will confess with their mouth mm -hmm. and believe in their heart yes. that you raised your son Jesus from the dead, mm -hmm. and uh, he got up, and that he got up with all power in his hands, God. Yes. And we pray, oh God, that they will surrender their lives unto you, mm -hmm. oh God. We know we will mess up sometimes, God, but we pray, God, that when we fall, we get right back up. Yes, God. Oh God, you said a righteous man falls <laughs> seven times, God, but he gets back up again. Yes, and we pray, God, that we would get back up again, God. We just thank you for what you've given us, God. We pray that you touch Elder Fred, oh, God. We pray that you touch our family, mm -hmm. oh, God. We thank you for what you're doing. In Jesus' name, Jesus amen. 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 Amen and amen. amen. That's our show for this week. We'll be back next week with another show, another hard-hitting topic. I want y'all to be here. Don't you miss it at all. Share this yes. with somebody. Share this with your friends and family. And if listen, if you're having a conversation at your church, you can let us know. Uh, if you don't want to let us know, we're just glad to have been a blessing. <laughs> yeah. All right, we'll see y'all back next week for another installment of A Funny Thing Happened on the Way Home from Church. I'm Fred. She is. Rhonda. See y'all next week. All right.